Hey everybody, welcome to the Baked Alaskan. It's MS Monday time and we have some stuff prepared. And by we, I mean me. And uh, just one second here, I have to hit the. Okay. So today I thought we'd talk about uh, coping with depression and that's a big problem with uh, people who suffer from MS and many other illnesses. Um, myself, I have bipolar disorder as well as MS and that complicates things greatly. So for me depression is a huge factor in my life and these are just strategies that are pretty obvious that I've been given along the way um, and with a little bit of um, insight for me as we go I guess my biggest thing that helps the most when I can't function is getting regimented it's like going balls out Natalie on your life it's like Making a schedule for when you go to the bathroom, it's getting your shit together, basically. And I know that sounds like overwhelming to start with number one, but it's not. You just think about all the things you do in a day and you write it down and you make a schedule. And I was joking about the pee schedule. You can pee whenever you want to. <laughs> um... But getting regimented gives you a basis uh, for all that you do after that or around that. Um, making a schedule simplifies things for you because you don't have to think about it. You just look at the clock and think, it's two o'clock, have I had lunch, I need to eat lunch. It's not, you know... It's two o'clock. Oh, what should I do? Should I, you know, go do laundry or should I eat lunch or should I play on the computer some more? You know, it's, there's no question. Um, I mean, unless you defy your own schedule, in which case, um, divine intervention. <laughs> that was strange. <clears throat> Anyways, we're just going to keep going. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take another one of these, because that was weird. Um, get outside. That is the last thing I want to do when I'm depressed. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to be around anybody. I certainly don't want to walk down the street and, you know, deal with anybody. But there are ways to get around that and still get exercise. Go for, not early morning, be safe, but go for morning walks. Um, and you can usually... Well, for me, if I go early enough and it's still light out and everything, um, I can avoid most of traffic noise and there's usually nobody on the sidewalks except for a few dog walkers, so it's, you know, don't miss it, right? And so, like, when you're first starting, getting outside and walking for 10 minutes, totally okay. I mean, just getting outside is a victory victory big v that's not a v <laughs> that's not a v either <laughs> how do i make a v with my fingers on the camera i don't know man it's backwards <laughs> the v <laughs> why can't i do it with both hands like it has to be upside down the v <laughs> I'm not even that stoned. What is wrong with me? Getting outside is a victory. No matter what. I'm told V. 
victory. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> ideally, <clears throat> when you get in the swing of things and you get into your whole schedule and the ring and roll and all that, you should be walking about 20 to 30 minutes a day just for health and just for your body. I mean, getting getting moving works those joints and keeps you from being stiff and in pain later. So, I mean, it's a win-win, win-win-win. Except for the whole part where you have to get outside. But maybe your building has a room that you can go and use a treadmill and not even leave the building. That would be, you know, totally okay too. But you should try to get out on your balcony or something. Just get some fresh air. Get some sun, that kind of thing. Um, this is really hard for me, is eating regular meals. I, um, I don't like to eat alone, really, and I'm alone a lot, so, um, <clears throat> I find it hard to stomach food a lot of times, I, and I never understood this. Uh, my stepmother was Japanese and she always told me food tastes better with people, other people. And um, she, she was right, so right. I, I totally understand her not, you know, if you would have met her, she was like literally 75 pounds. I'm not kidding. I used to see her, she has to keep uh, her weight for the doctor and uh, because she was a cancer patient and uh, she was literally at one point below 75 pounds tiny woman and she wouldn't eat unless I was eating with her or yeah that was pretty much it and um, I'm not that bad or anything but I understand that compulsion to delay gratification for yourself almost uh, and not look after your own needs because you're into being around other people but you have to eat because you have to keep your metabolism up because if you don't it's, you know it's just gonna get real bad real fast when I speak from personal experience I don't think I need to you know spell it out for you but yeah, it's gotten real bad real fast for me. Um, socializing, even when you're just on the internet, is so important. Uh, just using your brain that way to communicate with other people in a positive way. That's important, positive. Don't go on the internet and be a dick. Don't be a troll just because you feel like shit. It's not productive. For anybody, you're hurting somebody else, and you're hurting yourself too. So go on the internet to meet people, to talk about things you love, TV shows, music, um, you know, what, what have you, whatever your favorite things are, movies, concerts, I don't know, those are my favorite things, I can't think outside of them. <laughs> what? Video games. Video games, art, photography. But the important thing is, when you're on the internet, don't hide. Don't be an observer. Don't just sit around and watch everybody talk and think that that's you interacting. Because that's not. You're just hiding. And you're using the internet. Speak up. Even if you just say one thing. You know? Hi, everybody. And if nobody responds, that's fine. You said something. You tried. And, you know, tomorrow you try something else. You can observe and, and can, can feel a part of everything, even if you can't contribute much. But still try to contribute. Uh, other ways to socialize besides the internet uh, are meetups, which I talked about in my video, I think last week or the week before. Um, and groups, which I talked about as well, like support groups. Um, and you know what? Calling friends you haven't seen or talked to in a long time is a great way to 
bolster your feelings about yourself, your relationships, um, and get in touch with who you kind of were when you knew that person before the depression hit. I think that's super important. Super important. Grooming. Now, this is a really hard thing for people that have no real schedule in life and, you know, other than the one you made for yourself. <clears throat> and if, if you do lack discipline, if it is something that you struggle with to, you know, if that you've lost track of in the really deep, 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 deep depressions, they, they, you just don't give a shit anymore about if you smell or not, or if your hair is not nice, or you haven't brushed your teeth for days. It happens. Don't feel ashamed. Really don't. Um, just try to be better, you know? Try to fight it. Try to... Um, I have some strategies here that I've written down, um, making your shower about self-care, making it about pampering yourself, looking forward to that activity rather than dreading it as something you have to do, um, embracing the rituals of your beauty regimen, or if you don't have a beauty regimen, just your, your ritual, um, and speaking from experience, get a haircut. Nothing drastic, you know. Try not to go, and, like, if you have 20 inches of hair, cut it all off like mine. You know, that, you might really regret that, and it might make your depression worse. So try not to make any huge decisions when you're depressed like that. But, you know, maybe go get a trim and, you know, a fluff and um, layer it or something. Something that, you know, is not irreparable. Uh... And it feels so good. Like, you just look at yourself in the mirror differently. You're like, for me, this is like who I am. This is what my, in my head, when I think about who I am, this is what I look like. Um, not the person with long, shaggy hair. Um, so, it's something really to consider, this idea of uh, self-care and um not letting what am i trying to say not letting it get away from you again i mean like for me i'm coming around and i'm really trying to fight all this stuff off so all this advice i'm giving you is you know, take it with a grain of salt, take it, you know, with what, take what you can from it. I'm still struggling myself. I don't know, have all the answers. I am just trying to help others as I help myself. So if this is helpful to you, I'm very, very happy. If it's not, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I'm just doing what I can. I'm doing my best and I hope you are too. So, um, with that, I'm going to have another puff. And I want to mention that next week, I think I'm going to try to do a live MS Monday and invite you all to share your stories and your struggles. And um, if you want to compare notes uh, and talk about things that are bothering you or ideas that you would like me to cover in the next coming weeks. Um, but if that works for you, if you enjoy the idea of an MS Monday live and you want to be a part of it, please leave me a time down below that is most convenient for you. Uh, I'm planning, I would like to do it in the morning, Eastern time, you know, between, I'd say, 9 and noon. Um, if that window works for you, let me know. Or if it doesn't work for you, let me know too, and we can see what else we can do. So, thank you everybody for joining me this week. I hope you have a wonderful Monday. It's just the beginning of the week. Everything's getting started. 
and um, you know, all things are positive now. So keep smiles on your faces and have yourselves a wonderful day. Be well, everybody.